This is a case of deep vein thrombosis of the right femoral and popliteal veins. The patient presented with edema of the right foot and lower part of the right leg. A mildly hyperechoic thrombus is seen in the right femoral and popliteal veins on ultrasound. The femoral vein is seen medial to the femoral artery on cross section. There is near total occlusion of the femoral vein as seen in this cross section. The thrombus is seen bulging into the lumen of the femoral vein. The vast majority of lower extremity deep vein thrombosis develops in the veins of the calf, namely the peroneal veins, posterior tibial veins and the veins of the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles. On ultrasound, this thrombus is seen as a non-compressible venous segment. That means the femoral vein in this area is non-compressible. There would also be increased flow in the adjacent superficial veins. In addition, there is lack of flow augmentation on squeezing the calf muscles. On color Doppler ultrasound, there is absent color flow in the region of the thrombus in the femoral vein. On spectral Doppler, there is lack or loss of phasic flow on Valsalva maneuver. As the thrombus appears only mildly hyperechoic and there is increase in venous diameter, this is suggestive of an acute or a subacute thrombus. Also, in a subacute thrombosis, the surface of the thrombus is smooth. In addition, note the presence of a free floating edge of the thrombus bulging into the lumen of the femoral vein. All these findings point to a diagnosis of acute or subacute thrombosis of the right femoral vein. If the thrombus proceeds to a chronic post-thrombotic stage, then there would be normal or decreased venous diameter. On color Doppler, note the presence of a filling defect or a flow void in the, in the region of the thrombus in the femoral vein. The adjacent right femoral artery shows normal flow while the right femoral vein shows absence of flow in the region of the thrombus. In cases of chronic thrombosis, as this thrombus proceeds to a chronic stage, one would see rigid intraluminal material irregular surface of the thrombus and synechia or adhesions within the thrombus. Fibrotic bands may be present. In addition, there may be calcifications within the thrombus. All these features are not seen in this case, hence it appears to be a subacute thrombosis of the right femoral vein. In addition, uh, mild compression must be done to see for compressibility of the femoral vein so as not to produce a displacement of the thrombus resulting in a shift of the thrombus into the inferior vena cava and a resultant pulmonary embolism. As we go down to the right popliteal vein, there too we find an echogenic thrombus within the popliteal vein. The popliteal vein is seen superficial to the popliteal artery. Here too, we can see a near total uh, ob obstruction of the popliteal vein by the large thrombus. The diameter of the popliteal vein is significantly increased compared to that of the popliteal artery. This suggests an acute or a subacute thrombosis of the popliteal vein. As the popliteal vein thrombosis proceeds to a chronic stage, it would result in gradual fibrosis and contraction of the thrombus resulting in a small or a fibrotic popliteal vein. A long section through the popliteal vein and popliteal artery show the full extent of the thrombus located within the popliteal vein. So what are the dangers or complications of such a thrombus within the popliteal vein and the femoral veins? The commonest complications are pulmonary embolism venous thromboembolism, phlegmatia cerulea dolens, 
and post-thrombotic syndrome. The management of this condition involves anticoagulation therapy, which is the mainstay, mainstay of the treatment of DVT. In addition, the choice of anticoagulant and duration of therapy depends on the individual patient and the severity of the DVT. In some cases, thrombolytic therapy may be used to dissolve the thrombus. Surgical intervention may be done in severe cases of DVT or if there is a risk of pulmonary embolism. Early diagnosis and prompt treatment are crucial to prevent complications such as pulmonary embolism. As we can see in the video above, uh, there is near total absence of flow in the popliteal vein on color, color Doppler. Both cross section and long section color Doppler of the popliteal vein show absence of flow within the, this region of the vein. The popliteal artery which lies deep to the thrombose popliteal vein shows normal flow. Again showing a long section of the popliteal vein with absence of flow on color Doppler. This patient was put on anticoagulant therapy and advised follow-up ultrasound. We also did a spectral Doppler ultrasound to see flow within the popliteal vein and to confirm the diagnosis of a popliteal vein thrombosis. Spectral Doppler trace through the popliteal vein in the affected segment shows complete absence of flow.